the Philippines. So we'll have uh, Norma and Connie. Norma is the uh, director of the Ecumenical Center for Development, which is otherwise called uh, Kasimbayan, which is a, an, an NGO uh, involved in peace, justice, human rights, women's <coughs> empowerment uh, work. And she is the chair of the Board of Church and Society uh, in the Philippines. And uh, she is a United Methodist victimist. Uh, let's hear from you, uh, Norma. Magandang hapang. Good afternoon. Mm. The piercing and grinding stop of poverty is seen in the testimony of the widow. That's very biblical. I have nothing to beat, only a handful of milk in a jar, a little oil in a jar. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat and die. <coughs> the wrenching experience of hunger is like when a boy cried after he told he could not receive communion because it is not at his time. The boy kept on crying, he said, all I want is to eat a piece of bread, for I am very hungry. If only I could have those piece of bread, I know my intestines would have something to grind. The child in that parish of Father Jeremy represents the human face of hunger and poverty. He may not know the rule of the church about communion, but there is something that he knew that he was hungry. I came from the context, from a context where poverty and hunger give life to the 7.1 GNP increase under President Aquino. We do not understand this because the Aquino government has a reason to rejoice if the measurement of development and poverty eradication is based on growth. There is also a reason for the big business to rejoice. For the current growth speaks well of how much they have earned and never grew poor. But the sad reality is the growth is not translated into poverty alleviation, job security, and supposedly better social services. I came from a context when government computation for underemployment excludes discouraged job hunters. The real unemployment rate is currently at 10.5 percent. There's so many statistics that speaks well about this. But what I'm trying to say now is that the minimum wage in the Philippines is $1.40 per hour. Brazil, 550, compared to U.S., that is 23.30 per hour. So the rate of exploitation among the laborers reduced them to slaves or non-human degrees. And because of difficulty of finding jobs and better jobs, there is now an issue of migration that translates to more than 4,000 Filipinos leaving the country in order to get a job in other lands. Every day, that's 4,000 Filipinos every day work up, uh, go out, leave the country in order to seek a better job compared to our country. Then the Aquino government is implementing a wage system which, pro which private companies uh, give the prerogative to determine how much workers are entitled to receive. Workers will receive a lower floor, we, we call it two tires. One is this low wage and the other one is the productivity allowance based on the agreement between the management and the employees. In the theme, uh, as I was in the reflection of the theme, the faces of the workers and poor people and with each day, the public bus, bus just flashing their mind, cramped in a bus where we could almost, we could have almost breath, and the images of Le Miserable mark on their faces. Mind you, we cannot, the workers in the Philippines would not be able to watch Le Miserable for their salary would match, would uh, be equivalent to a cinema show. If the theme is to be realized, then a structural justice system must be implemented. 
Since your desire to eradicate poverty needs serious justice system that would make it sure that every person will certainly enjoy the promise of abundant life. Growth is not about a blessing and gift for the already rich and powerful. Growth must be measured on the food on the table, decent job, and decent pay, and democratic space for the demands of the poor are hidden. No killings, no extrajudicial killings on labor leaders, no harassment, and no trump up charges. I came from a context when union leaders are being killed. Union leaders are receiving harassments and right now receiving trump up charges. They are being detained on the cases of the violations they did not commit. I came from a context when we address a specific thing, then you are in trouble. In the Philippines, you do not have trouble when you bring charity to the people, like relief goods. My organization is also doing relief goods. But when we start to pursue on justice, then we will have a problem. Not a few of us, of those members of human rights groups and union leaders and the progressive organizations have been killed because of this endeavor. One is a member of National Council of Churches in the Philippines. Many of them are uh, former staff and supporters who one, one, one of them would be responsible in relief distribution. And because he wanted it in a very organized way, the military thought he was a communist. So he got killed. Mm. So this is our context. When we address the issue, it's all right to study it, to have a panel like this. But when we pursue and then really seriously pursue and critique the, the system, then we will have a problem. So, um, so this is this is the context where we live in, and uh, Connie will continue and share with you later. I'll come back to you uh, later, Connie. But Norma, you raised a matter that I'd like to come back to you on the whole issue of democratic space. Mm -hmm. uh, that's. There are countries that provide for food, that provide for shelter, but it muzzles the expression of voice and dissent. So the whole, the whole idea of democratic space, to me, is constitutive of sustainability. And I, I'd like to come back to you, uh, with, because when you say, I know very well for organization, when they give food, it's all right to the government. When they organize the farmers and the workers, that's not all. Hmm. Uh, something fundamentally flawed in charity over sustainability. Because organizing them for sustainability is what is troublesome to the powers that they do. But doling out food and other things, what is not. So, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, June, give us your